<laughs> God, this technology is just phenomenal. Okay, we are in the library. Let's have a little sip here. So, without anyone on, this is where I'd be doing. If I was in here on my own right now, I'd probably be picking up a book and reading it. What's exciting about the world we live in is I can take some ideas, some lessons from some phenomenal people and bring them live to you guys. If you're with me, say hi. I mean, I really appreciate you coming in, taking some live lessons and some action steps from the library here with me. Um, so say hi. If any ideas pop up for you, pop them in the comments as well because I want to hear from you. This is a constant exchange of ideas and lessons we can all learn together and actions we can take together as well. So the book I've picked up is The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. Now I can give a personal recommendation for this book because this is one of the first books that I read and the value I know that if I just turn to the contents page, we have 62 success principles. Hi Annabelle. We have 62 success principles here. So oftentimes you hear the one key to success, the one key to success. And this gentleman, Jack Canfield, very successful man, he's got 62 in here. And I think he actually talks about the fact there's probably more. So let's delve straight in, straight in. Let's pick, let's pick some, oh, I've just seen something I highlighted in green here. Okay, this is a quote that he's included from James Allen. And he said, you are today. Hi, Carl. We've all got the brain cells, my brother. We just gotta just gotta apply them. I mean, I didn't have didn't start with all these books. You know, I think that's important. Lots of people are saying things like, "I wish I had your library, Jermaine," and stuff like that. Just start with one for me. Start with Giovanni. Hi, Giovanni. If you should watch this video on replay, start with Giovanni from Cardiff. He gave me this book, "Being Happy." Very simple book and uh, easy concepts and stuff. So it really got me started. And you know. I built this up over time and I continued to build it. Um, so yeah, what I was going with this was, I had highlighted this in green four years ago, and it says, you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. And the title of the chapter is Talk to Yourself Like a Winner. So talking to yourself like a winner would be a, a great lesson in itself and an obvious action step. But let me elaborate a little bit. How many times have you spoken to yourself in such a way like you wouldn't dream of speaking to someone else. You might say, oh, you're such an idiot. Why do you always, why do you always mess it up? You know, and you're talking to yourself in this way and it's putting your mind down. You're putting yourself down. This make sense? And what, what happens is you start to feel like those things. You're constantly calling yourself an idiot, constantly asking, telling yourself that you mess up. It's very difficult for you to win at life to win at improving your body, to win at starting your business, to win at progressing your career. So what Jack Canfield's talking about here is talking to yourself like a winner, you know, and not in just a cliched positive thinking way, just in a way that probably is the truth, that you've done some great things. Do you mean you've done some great things and you can go and do even more great things? That's not positive thinking, that's the truth. And then, yes, I can build on some strategies from that. So when he says talk to yourself like a winner, you can even go a little bit, a bit softer than that. Winner can sound a little bit like a, like a, like life is this big competition. What if you were to talk to yourself, like you would talk to your two-year-old self or your two-year-old son or daughter? You know, my son Fraser. If he falls down and hurts himself, I encourage him to get back up, and I build his energy back up. Does this make sense? When he has a go at something new, and he might fail, it doesn't matter. What do I do? I encourage. I encourage. I encourage. So talk to yourself like you talk to your two-year-old son or two-year-old daughter or the two-year-old version of yourself. Hi, Shivra, how are you, lovely? Talk to yourself like that, like you would that version of yourself, that toddler. Okay, let's go with... Oh, here we go. Success Leaves Clues is the title of the chapter. And I've circled who's already done what you want to do. Now, this is so powerful. This has made such a difference in my life. I mean... You know, there's, there's an obvious example that I had four years ago, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins has done so many things, added value to people's lives in the way I wanted to. So I started to model some of the things he did. I managed to remove severe asthma from my body. How did I do that? I didn't experiment in a million different ways. I googled, we have an amazing 
uh, tool available with us. I googled who else has cured themselves of asthma and there was forums and ideas and tools and strategies. So whatever it is you want to do, if you want to write a book, if you want to get the promotion in work, if you want to get your dream body, if you want to lose 5% body fat, if you want to put on 10 pounds of muscle, we live in a world where there's so much information. I mean, I'm surrounded by a lot of it. You can just lost connection there. You can take whatever you want to do and you can find other people who have done the same and you can learn from their mistakes. Does this make sense? You don't have to go out and make loads of mistakes. You will make some mistakes and you'll learn from them and then you'll find other people who have done what you want to do and they can speed up the process. Does this make sense? Okay, so let's find another principle, a success principle here from Jack Canfield. Let's have a look. Okay. Written in big writing here. And I think this is, it's going to sound obvious, but I'm going to explain a little bit. The whole chapter, this is a whole chapter on, this called, Decide What You Want. Now, deciding what you want sounds easy. You'd be like, yeah, of course you mean, I know what I want. But do you really know what you want, specifically? Some of you watching this and some of you watching the, the replay of this, actually, you guys, if you even watched the video like this, you probably already decided what you want. But how often do people tell you what they don't want? They say, I don't want to be overweight anymore. I don't want to be broke anymore. I don't want to be in debt anymore. I don't want to be unhappy anymore. Lots of people can tell you a big list of things they don't want. But it's when you realize what you want and you decide what you want, you can start to take steps to get there. And that's the point he's making here. So if I want to go, if I want to drive to Edinburgh, I'm here in Wales, Cardiff, and I want to drive to Edinburgh. It's no use to me to say, I don't want to go to South America. I don't want to go to Bristol. I don't want to go to Antarctica. I don't want to go to the Congo. I, not, I can't get to Edinburgh until I decide that I want to go to Edinburgh. You can't write the book until you decide you're going to write a book. You can't lose 10 pounds of body fat until you decide to lose 10 pounds of body fat. You have to decide what you want and lots of clarity. You can, you can look through the books, the training programs, the videos through the eyes of clarity then when you've decided what you want. So I think that's an important point that Jack makes. If you're watching this live or even the replay, pop some things below, some powerful decisions that you've made and you've actually achieved things that you want or you're on the road to achieving things that you want because you've decided what you actually want and you've focused on it. If you're watching the replay or watching live, comment below. And we'll move on to another, another lesson from this. As you can see, it's a very thick book with lots of success principles in. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay. Obvious again, but I think, I think what you'll find is when you read the books on success and stuff, it may seem obvious, but what isn't obvious is getting it done. You know, so we've got here, start engaging in the activities that will make my dream a reality. Wow. So we can get caught up sometimes in, 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 and these are all great strategies, by the way, we can get caught up in the visualization and, and um, you know, the picturing things that we want and, and, and really identifying in our mind the things that we want. But it says, start engaging in the activities that will make your dream a reality. So all of the mindset stuff is important. Of course it is. Of course it is. But, you know, my dream, my dream was to help millions of people across the world through my ideas of improving the mindset and empowered thoughts and empowered beliefs. Now, sitting there, and indeed, you know, I'm going to be up front and honest with you, this is, this is a live video, I'm going to let the live, live thoughts move through me as well. The only way that was sustainable on a global level to help me and my family was to profit from that process. Does this make sense? I'm not going to sit here and, and, and pretend that I'm a saint and, 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 I, and I don't profit from making my dreams a reality, but it becomes a fair exchange. It becomes a fair exchange. The people that I've coached that have invested in me, they've gone on to do amazing things and got a return on that investment. And maybe people are investing in them for other things as well. So this is a bit of a side, side topic that I was talking about with someone else today. It's okay. It's okay for people to invest in your products and services because you know the value, right? But the point is to start engaging in activities that make your dream a reality. Start small. Fall in love with the small, in fact. And you can get to big. Does this make sense? Whatever the activity is. And be mindful. Do the activity. Do the activity well. 
move that next step towards your dream life. Yeah? Move that next step towards your dream life. Okay, let's take one more. One more from Mr. Jack Canfield here. Here we go. We've, we've talked a little about that from other books. And, you know, I'm going to uh, see if we can get a new... Okay, here we go. This is, a, this is a shout out to my brother Warren Inspire Ryan here as well. The more passion, excitement and energy you can muster, the more powerful the ultimate result will be. Now, I'm privileged enough to be the head facilitator, head trainer at the Feel of Speaking Academy, the creation of Warren Inspire Ryan. And if you know Warren Inspire Ryan, you will know that he has mustered an incredible amount of passion, energy, excitement, and it's drawing people in. Does this make sense? So as a leader, if you're going to lead people, if you're going to lead yourself, it becomes a lot easier if you fuel it with passion, energy, and excitement. Now, as I say that, I realize that could be a little bit of just a, it could potentially be a bit of a mindless lesson. It could be just words when I say muster your excitement. A lot of you, a lot of you are going to be thinking, how? How do I muster that excitement? Well, ask yourself the question, first and foremost, is a great, is a great way to start. Is a great way to start. Ask yourself the question, what am I excited about? And the mind is like Google, right? It has to come up with an answer. A true answer if you keep asking. Because, you know, if you're in a, a bad state or a negative state, you might be like, nothing, I'm not excited about anything, Jermaine. I know you're not excited about anything, but if you had to be excited, what would you be excited about? Or what excites you? And it could be anything. It could be walking, running, football, rugby, golf, business meetings, you know, comedy shows. Just get that excitement moving through you. Yeah, and then you can attach the excitement to things you actually want to achieve. I was having a conversation on the phone literally 20 minutes ago about how when people say follow your passion. Now this could be good advice, it could be bad advice. Because we've all got multiple passions. So you, the thing that you're passionate about, that you have a skill set around or you can build skills in, follow that. Because that's where you make the biggest difference in the world. Get excited about that or the biggest difference in your family life, or the biggest difference in the workplace. Follow those things. So the example I gave to my friend on the phone then would be, I could be crazily passionate, crazily passionate about basketball. Love basketball. But I could be four foot 11, four foot 11, have really poor skills, hadn't practiced any basketball skills at all, really. And I could be 35 years of age, and it, that, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to follow that passion with a view of getting to the NBA. Now, I know that there's lots of, um, you know, motivational speakers and stuff that there's great to absorb, but you hear, you know, you hear things like, yeah, but you, you hear him say, oh, but you keep going, you keep going, you'll get to the NBA. My view is, it's just my opinion, if you're 4 foot 11, 35, you haven't practiced a lot of basketball, following that particular passion to get to the NBA, to the NBA doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, you're going to be passionate about other stuff. You could be passionate about communicating with people and you've done five in-depth communication courses and you've got a communication coach. So you play a little bit of basketball on the side, but you start a communications training company. You're passionate about it, but you've got a skill set around it. You follow what you're passionate about. Well, you've got a skill set attached to it or a skill set you can develop attached to it that's where you make the biggest difference. So get excited about that. Get excited about what you're passionate about and get excited about where the passion is and the skill set comes together. I hope this makes sense and I, I'm sure Jack Canfield from the Success Principles will give you the same advice. So I'd like to wrap this video up, first of all, by saying thank you for being with me live once again. Thank you to everyone watching on the replay. And I think wrapping up with the idea that there isn't one key to success. I mean, one of the most successful authors of all time is Jack Canfield in the nonfiction arena. And he has 62 success principles. And he admits to there being more, but he didn't want to write a 20,000 page book. So be a student. I've been listening to a lot of Jim Rohn again recently. Be a student, not just a follower. Absorb the information. Build your own collection of 100 success principles. And whatever works for you, works for you. So don't take what I say, what Jack Canfield says, what Tony Robbins says, don't take that as the right way. Take on the information, 
if it fits with you, if it works with you, if you can take action on the information, go do it and improve the quality of your life, any area of your life with the information and the action. And then let's, let's stay in contact. I mean, you guys, you've sent me a lot of messages lately about the live from the library and I just love it. I love the idea of inspiring you to read a book, read more, take action on what you're reading. So I'm going to keep these coming as long as people keep watching. So it's been my absolute pleasure to have you live with me here today, guys. And you guys watching the replay, have a wonderful Friday, have a wonderful weekend. And I'll be here live from the library tomorrow. Take care, my friends.